Like, it's, they're not using this excess verbiage, they're not using big words, it's really just kind of a stripped down, very basic active voice, and that's perfect. Um, also, if uh, when you want to read out your script, writing in all caps is really a good idea. Just because you see it better, you won't trip over your words as much, and you'll take less um, takes to get the perfect um, take. Um, also, where for, for the host, um, when you write your script, what could be really useful is to write a little intro that you don't say, but is meant for the anchors, so for Nick or Sandra. So basically, before the show, what you would do is you would just, you know, you have your, you know, you have your audio, which you've sent to Nick or Sandra, and then uh, you write like a little anchor intro that Nick or Sandra can just read on air, and then that way they know what the story is about and it's not, they're not kind of going in blind and they, they know how to intro it because you've written them something. Um, in terms of recording your interview, um, make sure your phone is recording at high quality. Some Samsung phones I've noticed have like a high quality on and off switch that sometimes people don't realize is on. Um, so always record in high quality, that way you get MP4As, which is a, a pretty good uh, recording. So I've gotten crap in the past because I didn't realize the high quality was off. Um, find a spot that isn't noisy and has no echo. So if you're in a museum, maybe go to a nearby hallway or office. That's always best. If you're, if you're in a museum, it's a very open space. It's going to be very echoey. And already people are, aren't going to like the fact that you're talking there. Um, ask um, before, before you do the interview itself, always ask the interviewee to explain who they are just to test the levels. So if their levels are too low, just politely ask them to talk a bit louder. Um, record five to ten seconds of ambient noise. So if you make any cuts or pauses, you can lay it over to mask it. Um, that's really important too. Sometimes we make these little cuts and the ambient noise is a really good idea to just kind of, you know, mask any edits that you're making. Um, and, and when conducting the interview, obviously be clear with your voice so the phone catches it. And if you see that the levels aren't high when the interviewee is talking, just ask them to speak a little bit higher, you can edit that whole part out. Um, if you are using an eddy roll, so from the, if you're using an eddy roll from the journalism department, um, input levels between 80 and 100, that's what picks everything up the best. And um, input volume is not the same as volume. This is a mistake a lot of people have made in my past classes, where there's playback volume and then there's input volume. So input volume is how loud how much it's going to pick up the sound. So let's say I, if the input volume is at 60 and I'm talking this way, like it's, it's going to pick up a certain amount, but if I turn the input volume up to 80, I can still talk this way, but it'll be louder. It'll, it'll boost it. Um, the playback volume is how loud it is when you listen to it. So just make sure that you're controlling the right volume when you do that. Um, and the Eddie rolls also have gain control, so high and low gains. Um, low gain picks up minimal sound. This is good for recordings with lots of background noise, right? So if you're in a, met a busy metro and you're trying to record somebody who's face to face with you, but there's a lot happening around you, if you have it on low gain, it's only going to pick up the sound that's like right in front of you. It's not going to pick up all that um, metro sound. Whereas high gain is really good if you're in a quiet area and the person is talking low. That way, um, let's say like you are in a museum and there's no one around you, but you still have to kind of whisper or you're in a library, the high gain is going to pick up more sound. Um, so yeah, let me just see. Um, so yeah, for formats, um, obvious for the format of your package report, um, you know, a great way to start one off is with sound. Um, it kind of paints a picture of where you are. So if you're in the metro, um, I know I'm using that example a lot, but if you're in the metro, just, um, you know, recording the metro car going by or something like that, just to kind of contextualize where you are. I, sound ups. Sound ups, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, those are really great for TV also. If you ever do TV journalism, uh, a sound up before you come in with your... Basically, you start with the sound up, you fade it out, and then you fade in your voice, and it sounds really good, and like I said, it contextualizes everything. Um, different formats work uh, for longer interviews. Start with your voice, then introduce the interview. Uh, when you get to the interview, don't introduce the person again, just go right into the first question. Um, so obviously, you might be recording your intro after you've done the interview. Um, so in the interview, when you start it off, don't say, I'm here with so-and-so, just start the first question. 
um, it'll be awkward in the it'll be awkward to the person you're interviewing, and it just won't sound good on radio. Um, then obviously you can do the streeter where you just introduce the topic and then all of the subsequent clips, you have like four 10 to 15 second clips that are just people. Your voice is only at the beginning and at, it doesn't even need to be at the end. Uh, the end should just be uh, a person. Is that I guess so. <laughs> 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 Then there's the wraparound. Um, this is where you introduce the topic, then insert a clip, and then finish it off. So these usually last about two minutes. Uh, it's good if you have one really long clip from someone and you just want to get it out quickly. So it, you know, you interview an athlete and they actually strung together a few more than a bunch of cliches. Um, you can just kind of have the intro, plug them in, and then kind of finish it off. Um, then there's the standard radio package that us journalism students will know if you take um, journalism 330, which is Radio Newsroom, uh, you know this for sure. It's um, you start with 15 seconds of fresh info, then a clip, then you continue with your script, uh, offering up new information, and then you would do another clip, and then you end on your own voice. Um, so that's pretty much how that works. Uh, these are all options that you can use when editing, but you can also get creative if you if you want. So I mean, if you ever feel like there's a different format that you want to do, by all means, do that. I mean, these are just kind of suggestions. Um, in term for what you can do with the show? Um, when I was working at a news station, um, we the way that we did our news packages is we just did 30 second news stories and our clips were only 10 seconds. Yeah. So it's also very variable to what station you work at yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, for sure. The reason why we do that is because they realize, like as you were saying in the beginning, people lose attention. Mm -hmm. So shorter the news story, shorter the clip, the more information you can give and the longer they'll hold attention. Yeah, exactly. So it's moving fast, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, I guess for our show, because we're not a daily show, we're a weekly show, um, that's why we can afford to go a little bit longer with our stories, because we want to go more in depth, and obviously, um, you know, because, like I said, we're only once a week, it, it just makes more sense uh, to have stuff that's a little bit longer. Um, so moving on to editing, uh, everyone has their preferences. I personally prefer to use Audacity when, <clears throat> I prefer Audacity to edit with. A lot of people, like, in journalism school, they're going to tell you to use GarageBand. Not use GarageBand. It is a piece of shit. <laughs> like, it, it doesn't make any sense. I've, I've used it once, because, like, if, if, you, if you're in journalism, you know AJ. Like, don't listen to AJ. Don't use Audacity. Don't use um, GarageBand and be aware of AJ in your future years. That's all I'll say. Um. Um, Two things about that. Um, the industry standard in most radio stations is Adobe Audition. Yeah. Um, that is a great editing program. Yeah. So if you ever have the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, play around with that. Um, yeah. Most stations use that. But also a lot of newsrooms and stations use a program called Burley. I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but it has like in editing, and it's also how most stations do their news reads and also pull from wires. Yeah. yeah. So just two things to think about. Yeah, I think but Burley is also how they like set up like uh, when doesn't it have scripts in it too or something? Yeah. Like that? Yeah, you can yeah. put scripts in it and everything. Yeah, and clips in yeah. like right in, so you literally just click and like, the clip plays. It's a great little program, yeah. but it's quite expensive, so it's usually it's like you learn an on the job type thing. Yeah. But I highly recommend if you want to know a good audio editing program, Adobe Audition. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. If if you can if you can get your hands on Adobe. Uh, definitely go for Audition. If you can't, Audacity, it's free, it's on PC and mm -hmm. Mac, and it's super simple to use, mm -hmm. so I definitely recommend it. And it's right. transferable, like it's like, if you know how to use Audacity, you'll know how to use Audition, and Audacity yeah. is honestly just perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very basic, and it's all you're gonna need, and like in J school, or just for like basic radio stuff, it's all you're really gonna need. I find GarageBand has too many options that are too hard to find. That because it's also for recording music, yeah. right? So I yeah. find that an odd choice. But yeah, yeah, it, it's rare. yeah. <laughs> like, like, like Allison said, it's for music. recording music, so it's not. It's really not, really not optimal for editing just basic radio <laughs> stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's very easy to edit. I mean, if you want to amplify something, all you have to do is highlight the part that you want to amplify, and it's like in effects. Whereas something like GarageBand. Um, you actually have to like make dots and bring up the dots and it's just complicated for no reason. Um, also, natural peaks such as door slams and stuff like that can be reduced so they don't peak as badly. Um, so 
you can de-amplify something so that if you see in Audacity that you have sort of like your workstation, and if you see like the blue sound peaks that are hitting the top, that means that you're clipping, which is no good, so you want to kind of bring that down, and you can, you can do that by de-amplifying. Um, and essentially, your peak amplitude, uh, uh, yeah, amplitude and the rest of the audio should peak between negative six decibels and zero decibels. Um, it should never go above zero decibels, and it should never hit zero decibels. Um, you, you know that just by in kind of any edit, um, audio recording software or audio editing software, as soon as it's clipping, you see like a red bar. It, it, you see that in Final Cut Pro when you're uh, editing video is that there's always like this little red bar when you're clipping. So just kind of keep it between negative six and zero and you get, when you have that, you have very clear sound and there's no distortion, it's, it's perfect. And um, the board at CJLO luckily kind of corrects that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. it, does, yes. it does correct that kind of stuff, but obviously we, that's not ideal. Exactly. And always keep in mind that like, if you record audio low, it's easier to fix than if you record audio high to bring it yeah, down. Yeah, absolutely. So always aim to be, yeah. Minus three and zero, that's the radio sweet spot. <laughs> yeah. And if, you're, if you record too low though, the problem is, is when you amplify, you're going to hear like this sound in the back mm -hmm. because you're, you're doing too much to the audio. It, it's really crucial to, it's kind of like when you shoot video out of focus, you're never going to fix it. There's no way to fix the, like, you can, you can put as many sharpness corrections on it as you want, it's still not going to look good. Mm -hmm. So with audio, it's the same way, just record it properly the first time and then you won't have to do as much to it later. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you have like two and five second gaps in the interview audio, so the person pauses, you can just remove those. I mean, no one's going to notice and it just sounds better. It's less awkward, you know, max of one second gaps. I, it's really nitpicky, but it just makes your package more concise and radio has to be so precise. I mean, you have 60 minutes and everything has to be down to the second. So when you're confined between those restraints, it's really crucial to be able to take out those take out stuff anywhere you can. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And then when you export, uh, always in MP3 uh, at 192 or 320 uh, kbps, and that's, that'll be good enough. You don't want to export in an AIFF or something that's too big. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you will in journalism because it can handle that, but um, that's pretty much it. Um, and I think that's pretty well it. And obviously, like, for our show, you can do in-studio interviews. So for that, um, Nick and Sandra have done them plenty of times before. Um, you can either have the person come in or we can have the person call them up. And for in-person interviews, it's basically they come in and you just interview them on the spot. Those can last 10 to 15 minutes because when the person's actually there, the person listening can actually feel that they're there more so. Like There's more of a connection when the person's actually in studio or on the phone. And I feel like people's attention is kind of grabbing, it's gravitated more and you can ask more in-depth questions and you're not cutting as much when it's in studio. Um, one thing though, for musicians especially, do not compliment them. Like, they're, you're there to ask them questions. Don't kind of, you know. Um, it's a job. Yeah, yeah, it's a job. Basically don't, you know, talk, talk about how great their song is or how much you love their music. Um, because then they get sort of this like false sense of security, like where they're like they feel like they can just kind of take the interview wherever and they can say whatever they want because they know that you're a fan of their music type thing and they some musicians will take advantage of that. Um, so just kind of you know um, interview them like you would interview like a politician or anybody. Obviously, you're not asking questions to trap them, but just like keep in mind that you know, you're there as a job and it, you're not there to get free tickets. Same thing yeah. with covering events. Like if you're going to yeah. talk about an event, you can't, yeah. you can't promote it. It's not yeah, PR. Exactly. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to hand it over to Allison now who will just talk about, um, you know, being a DJ and how you can be a DJ for CJLO and what, uh, how Allison handles her own shows. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to talk too long, but before I go on that, I just want to have one more like piece of thing to like branch off of the journalism talk that Alex just had. Um, I worked with someone, I used to work at a news station called CKBW in Nova Scotia, and my coworker gave me a piece of advice that really worked when it came to, you know, um, interviewing people for the radio specifically. She always told me that when you're doing an interview, always clip in your head. As you're asking questions, try to aim your questions so that 
the answer you'll get sounds good on the radio. Um, you got to get that clip. Like that is that is what's really important. Um, so kind of clips that were really good on the radio are things about like emotion. So like asking like how something made them feel. So like like say you're talking about like an event that's happening and they worked really hard on it. Be like, how does it feel to have this complete? And then they'll be like, oh, it's really great. And then they'll have like a really good quote that's like kind of like full of emotion. And that sounds really good on the radio instead of just like informational type questions. So always think about that clipping in your head. Cause like writing for the, writing journalism for radio is a whole different thing than print journalism, absolutely. And you just need to start thinking about how things will sound. Anyway, <laughs> just a little advice that always stuck with me when I was working in the field, but I don't do journalism anymore. I now work just as a radio manager. I'm the program director at CJLO. Uh, I met some of you, but uh, I haven't met most of you. But if you're ever interested in doing radio, um, it could be journalism, it could be a talk show, but most of the shows that we have at CJLO are music shows. So if you're a big fan of music, come talk to me and we can get a show rolling. But I am here to give a little bit of tips and tricks on, and things to think about to make your show sound kind of professional, to make it sound good, to kind of make it straight from the back. Um, and I didn't have a lot prepared. I just kind of want to talk about how I structure my show. Um, and then it'll give you some things to think about um, if you ever want to start a music show, or a talk show even. Um, a good way to think about your show is to think about it in segments. Because as these guys know, um, most radio stations um, have ad breaks that are required. So you kind of need to fill your content um, around these like required ad breaks. Um, so it kind of naturally sections your show. At CJ Lo, we have ad breaks at the 15 minute mark and the 45 minute mark. So it kind of creates like a 15 minute segment, a 30 minute segment, and a 15 minute segment. So I find it a lot easier to plan your show that way, to kind of break it up into small chunks. Um, today I had my show and I interviewed a musician and uh, I knew that it was going to be kind of longer form. So I aimed to call her right after the first ad break um, because I knew that I would have a long time and to kind of, I kind of want to have it uninterrupted. So always think about kind of segmenting your show. Um, another thing to think about if you were to start a show at CGLO is branding. Um, when you think about radio and how people consume radio, um, they'll never start the radio right at 11 o'clock. Be like, oh, Allison's show starting. Turn it on right at 11. Um, they're either like clicking when they go on the website, be like, oh, I guess I'll listen to CJ Lowe now. Or they're in their car and they're tuning it to the station. So you really have to think about those listeners who are just tuning in midway through your show. So you need to be able to think during your talk breaks how to get those people to know what they're listening to, what your show's about, what's coming up so that they don't turn away, and um, what they missed, that type of thing. So when you're doing talk spots, you just play the song and you're coming back. You need to brand the station, you're like you're listening to CJLO or you're listening to CKUT, whatever station you're at. Um, you need to say the name of your show, like oh, you're listening to Eastern Passage. Um, say your name and then introduce the song you just did and then go right into like what's coming up next. Also, and also during that time, you can obviously have like interesting things about the song you played or something that's going on in your life. But another good tip to think about is long talk spots, not the greatest. Because you may think that as you're talking, you're like, oh, I'm a radio host, like I have so much to say, everything's so interesting, I'm so awesome, I'm on the radio. Um, the more concise a talk spot is, the more high impact it will be. It'll make your show more interesting, it'll make your show more snappy. Um, so just think about that. Like if you have something to say about the song, make it a quick fact and then go right into like, oh, this is the song we're playing next, stay tuned because we're also gonna be playing this song. You're listening, and then brand again, you're listening to CJLO, playing the next song. I don't know, something to think about um, is uh, 
show prep is very, very, very important. Um, I've been doing radio a very long time, so I'll go into the studio and just wing shows sometimes, and they're never good. Like, I, I've been like in radio for so long, but it's the days where like I just make a Word document and I make point form what I want to talk about, the songs I want to play, those are the best shows I have. It takes an hour to think about the songs you want to play, the things you want to talk about, and it makes such a huge difference. Because it'll stop you from like doing like the rambling thing, like going in a talk spot and just talking forever and ever, and then having listeners lose focus, and yeah. So, when it comes to doing a show, think about branding, think about your show prep, and think about, what was the first thing I was even talking about? I feel like I'm rambling right now. <laughs> but, um, um, I don't know, does anyone here like interested in maybe doing like a music show someday at CJL? We're right next door. <laughs> um, oh, hey guys. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you're ever interested, come talk to me, and uh, I can give you more tips, more tricks. But basically, the best advice I could give anyone to is like who's in journalism or communications is to just like come to a radio show um, and fuck it up and just like ramble on air because it makes you so comfortable and like being able to talk on air and to broadcast is like those skills will burn. It's so important if you want to do anything in broadcasting or communications. And like, we'll give you a space where you can come and just like fuck things up for an hour on air. And you have an audience, and it's just, I don't know, just something to think about. <laughs> but um, in regards to other tips and tricks when it comes to radio, um, I don't think I really have any, but I just want to let you guys know that if you ever want to do radio, there are so many ways you can do that right next door at CJLO. You can do a music show, you can do a talk show, you can do journalism through the Concordian. But we also have a, a news magazine program called Champions of the Local Scene, which is every Wednesday at 6. Now, this show does not have a divine host. It is an open time slot where we have people come in. And so if you have an idea about who you consider a quote-unquote champion of the local scene, so that could be a musician you really love, a music label that you really love, or someone working at a nonprofit that you think is doing really good work. Or Josh brought in the guys from like Dispatch Coffee because he really likes their coffee. Um, if you have an idea for like an interview, someone you really want to interview or showcase, that is an, also an open time slot for you to do that. So if you ever have an idea about a champion of a local scene episode, come to me, we'll talk about that too. But yeah. Um, also, for the women in the room, we just started a feminist radio collective, um, and we just had our first meeting, so if you're interested in doing radio in a collaborative way, um, that is an avenue that you can explore, and you can talk to me about that. We're kind of working up the kinks there, but it is just another way to do radio. That, I guess, is my spiel, Alex. <laughs> also, I guess to build off what you were saying, um, when you do an interview, really prepare and research that person. Yes. Because the worst thing you could ever do is get on air with someone and not know anything about them. Yeah. And ask them a stupid question or ask them a question that they've answered a million times. Mm -hmm. um, let's say they've done something that they've answered a million times, but they haven't really been asked something in depth about it, and you want to go deeper with that, then by all means do that. But um, don't you know ask something that everybody knows or like if you if you talk to Max Pacioretty the captain of the Montreal Canadiens You don't want to ask him like I, I don't know an example like so or so uh, what's your role with the Montreal Canadiens like it's just a stupid question like just <laughs> ask, ask him like why do you score all your goals in the first 30 games and suck in the playoffs like <laughs> that's what you ask him you don't ask him like <laughs> Are you the captain of the Montreal Canadiens? Like, yes. yes. And like for interview prep, like that's just like the best. Yeah, it'll also be more comfortable. Yeah. You know, knowing that you know something, so if you ever get caught in a weird situation, you can get out of it. So, prep, show prep, interview prep, just prep. <laughs> it only takes a few minutes to an hour, and it makes a world of difference. Yeah, and you don't want to like embarrass yourself on air. That's like exactly. one thing. It's like I remember doing a, a sports show and kind of, um, I didn't, I. I forget really like the, I asked a question that like, me personally, I was curious, but like, I didn't look enough into it that 
when I got the answer, I was like, oh, that kind of made me look stupid. Mm -hmm. um, so you really just want to research your topic and really know what you're talking about going into it. Because let's say you're doing a sports show. I mean, usually it's the host of the show who um, I do it. I do a two-hour sports show with uh, another guy named Matthew O'Hayan, and he would really book the guests, and he would know more about the guests than I would. And that kind of led to situations where he knew something, but I didn't, and then I would ask a dumb question because because of that, and he would have known the answer if I had just asked him or had talked to him beforehand. So really, if you're doing a show with other people, really communicate with your co-host before the show. Really get a plan going, like Allison said, do a Word doc, and you know, really prep the show, and then you'll be, you'll be really good to go. Exactly, yeah, cool. Does anybody have any questions for Alex and I? Oh, hey, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sort of like, so like for people who just start out in video, mm -hmm. how much did you recommend? Like Alice was kind of talking about like put it, like making up your script, and you were saying like obviously you want to prepare for what you're going to say during talk. But how much did you recommend for people who are like never starting out to really write exactly what they're going to say, or does that come across as well like not genuine when you hear it on the air? It depends on the cadence of your voice and how you deliver things. Because <clears throat> there's some people that I know that when they really like write out a script, you can tell the way they're reading, they're reading from a script. Yeah. So and if they're already uncomfortable to begin with, it will probably be a bit amplified. So even if someone's nervous, I would suggest doing point form things. Mm -hmm. Like if you know you have to do a station ID and and say my name is Allison and say what the song is, kind of just do that point form thing. Um, Obviously, like, I don't know, are you guys like all journals and communication students? Yeah, so you guys will have like lots of experience reading scripts and sounding more comfortable on air anyway. So yeah. eventually, it's like a skill you have to learn to like make a script sound natural. But if you're starting out and you're nervous, I would still recommend doing point form and going off the fly a bit. Yeah, because yeah. it'll keep you from rambling too. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Like for scripts, really, a script is only really good if you're delivering the news yeah. because that you don't want to mess up and you want to get the facts straight and that you don't want to ramble and start giving your opinion or anything. So for if you're delivering like a news hit, definitely do a script. But if you're just kind of like doing a music show and you're leading into songs, like Allison said, point form, it'll keep you from rambling and it'll keep you concise and you'll be able to touch on everything you want to. Exactly, yeah. And if you were to script out your talk spots and say you wanted to say something else, the difference between reading from a script and then you talking on the fly is also apparent. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Hey. Hey. Um, so you can start up a show at any point during the school year? Any point, yeah. Um, so like say you're really busy right now, but you want to start something in February. Question. Come in in February. Um, so basically everything starts in, start? we get you to write a meeting application. So it really gets you thinking about the concept of your show and like how you'll plan it. And then we go from there. Then we just see what time slots are available. Then we do the training. Yeah, so it's literally any time. There's no like application periods that you miss. No, it's like you come to act, I'm in the office every day. Come to act. Thanksgiving. Awesome. Anybody else?